Good evening and welcome to the 2017 NBA Draft at Barclays Center, home of the Brooklyn Nets. These young men here tonight represent the future of our league, a continuation of a proud tradition of NBA players competing at the highest level and captivating fans around the world. Congratulations to the Golden State Warriors on their championship and to the Cleveland Cavaliers for a terrific run. Tonight, these players begin their own journey. Who will be the next LeBron James and Kyrie Irving, both pick number one? Who will be the next Steph Curry, pick number seven? Or Clay Thompson at 11? Kawhi Leonard at 15? Draymond Green at 35? Manu Ginobili at 57? Or Isaiah Thomas of the Boston Celtics? He was selected number 60, the last pick in the 2011 draft. Every pick matters. So let's get started. With the first pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Jason Tatum from Duke University. More than fair to say, I think Jason Tatum represents shooting. Uh, of the prospects that were available right there, the best prospects, he is the best shooter and the best offensive player uh, among Josh Jackson, De'Aaron Fox, and the like. He's smooth, uh, he's long arm, an isolation scorer, uh, shoots 85% from the free throw line, and you can put him down in the post, he can shoot over you, he can shoot out the three point range, and that's something he's really improved. Uh, he's got a great fadeaway. Uh, he needs a, a little bit better defensive intensity, but I thought he was just scratching the surface of how good he's going to be. He missed the first nine games of the season, but toward the end of the year, he was a, really a dominant scorer and dominant in the ACC tournament. W without Jason Tatum playing the way he did, you know, Duke doesn't win four games in four days, which had never been done in the ACC tournament before. But a young man that, that you can put him in isolation and he can uh, make a bucket. I mean, he's got terrific footwork. With the second pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Donovan Mitchell from the University of Louisville. Uh, an athletic combo guard that is great in transition. He's really an, another good finisher that can absolutely fly, especially off of two feet. He's not uh, so much of a one-footed jumper, more of a two-footed jumper, but that 6'10 wingspan, he can really have great impact on the game defensively. Gets downhill, a decent passer, but I think he's, his potential right now, his early success is going to be uh, as a defender. He's one of the better perimeter defenders in the draft, and he never shies away from a challenge. He really dominated Dennis Smith, and he held Malik Monk to 6 of 17 from the field, even though Monk hit those really big ones late. With the third pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Boston Celtics select Bam Adebayo from the University of Kentucky. Well, and he dunks on the way up. I mean, his dunks were powerful. And don't think I didn't notice that you gave away his 7-3 wingspan. Stay in your lane, Reese Davis. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll, but I'll take a shot of he's water. powerful. He's physical. He's tough. Uh, he's got really good hands. He's got excellent feet. So when he sets a screen, the guy he's screening stays screened. And then he rolls to the basket. You can throw it up to him. And he powerfully dunks that thing through. He dunks everything. Everything he does is basically around the basket in college. With the fourth pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Phoenix Suns select De'Aaron Fox from the University of Kentucky. Uh, De'Aaron Fox is the fastest player in the draft. 
Uh, if this were a race, he would have won this thing. Yeah, he's John Wall fast. He just doesn't have a John Wall body. Uh, an excellent defender. He gets steals and, ref uh, and deflections. He's very good on the ball and excellent in transition. He's the number two transition scorer in this draft. Number one was Malik Monk. Six points a game scoring in transition. Malik Monk, six points a game. Just elite speed in the open floor and excellent quickness and also a, a, a very good finisher. Led the Southeastern Conference in both assists and assists per game, even at a triple-double against Arizona State in the Bahamas. He's a very good passer. You know, he's right-handed naturally, but he plays and shoots as a lefty. Uh, but an excellent passer, finds people, finds people in transition, and he's unafraid. With the fifth pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Sacramento Kings select Jared Allen from the University of Texas. Well, and he can block shots and change shots in large measure because of his length. I mean, he's got a 7'5 wingspan. Crazy. No idea. Uh, yeah, tip it back. Uh, but he, he does run the floor well. He does rebound. He's one of two players in the Big 12 that averaged over 13 points and eight rebounds per game. Uh, not really an offensive player outside the lane. A good finisher. He converts on 68% of his shots around the basket, but he doesn't do much outside of the lane right now. Uh, so he's got somewhat of a limited offensive field, as I mentioned. One of the questions that, uh, that some people have had about Jared Allen, they would ask, does he love to play? Uh, I think he's going to be a really good player. With the sixth pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Orlando Magic select guard 6'6", six, six, Oregon, number 24, Dillard Brooks. With the seventh pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select John Collins from Wake Forest University. John Collins was terrific for Danny Manning in Wake Forest this past season. Got 19 points per game. First ACC player to average 19, nine boards and shoot 60% since Tim Duncan. Another Demon Deacon did it the 96-97 season. If you look at those player efficiency ratings that John Hollinger does, John Collins led the nation in player efficiency rating. With the eighth pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the New York Knicks select Lonzo Ball from UCLA. He's basically Jason Kidd. He's got that kind of size and length, and he's really incredible in transition. He gets up and down the floor. His ability to pass ahead is extraordinary. He's a terrific finisher at the basket. He shoots over 70% on his twos, mostly because he either gets all the way to the rim or he is shooting a three and shot 42% from three. To say that he's an elite passer, I believe, is an understatement. With the ninth pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Dallas Mavericks select OG Ananobi from Indiana University. Big time athlete. Uh, you mentioned the knee injury. When he's healthy, he's a Swiss Army knife on defense. He can guard a one. He can guard anywhere from one to a four, really. Long arms, really good timing. Uh, for 40 minutes, he averaged over two steals and two blocks per game. And his first year, you know, he was like a, a utility defender. He came in, gave great energy, started off his sophomore year in exhibition game. He was shooting the ball incredibly well, shot over 60% from three his first couple games. Obviously, that trailed off. Uh, he's still pretty raw offensively. 
With the 10th pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Sacramento Kings select Kyle Kuzma from the University of Utah. And really rose up on draft boards. Like he, he didn't have this kind of reputation uh, in the middle of last season. But I, you know, he really can go get the ball. He, he pursues it and he fights. He's a, he's a, a good, solid athlete that has length. Uh, he's improved his range. He's a much better offensive player than he was at the beginning of last season. Uh, he's a he's a gym rat, like he's a worker. Gym rat doesn't sound flattering, does it? They call the guy rat, <laughs> but he, but it is a, it's a flattering thing. He, he works his tail off, uh, but as a rebounder, that he had 15 double doubles on the season, and, and he's got a good a good nose for the ball. And I think that's an important that's an important factor for it. If you can rebound in college, it translates to the pros, and he can get extra possessions for you. With the 11th pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Derek White from the University of Colorado. Really amazing. A smooth combo guard that played point guard for the Buffs. Uh, a really good finisher. Uh, he's, uh, he's got a good floater. Uh, got to the free throw line. He was fifth in the Pac-12 in free throw attempts per game at about five and a half, so he understands how to get fouled. He's got good form on his shot uh, and a, a little bit of a slow release on his shot, but he's used it in pick and roll as a, as a primary ball handler and did a really good job, uh, I thought, uh, for, uh, for Tad Boyle. With the 12th pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Detroit Pistons select Jonathan Isaac from Florida State University. <laughs> Jonathan Isaac, uh, obviously you can see he is rail thin. I mean, he barely, I don't think he even weighs 210 pounds right now, but he is very skilled and he's a fluid shooter and a, a very mobile athlete that runs with really long strides. And he's got defensive versatility. He can block shots. He's got the athletic ability to guard multiple positions when he gets into the NBA and gets a little bit stronger. And he does need to get stronger. Uh, he's, got, he's got good form, a little bit of a slow release. He shot 42% from deep in February, only shot 17% from deep in March. That was, I thought that was a really interesting finish. With the 13th pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Denver Nuggets select Lowry Markkinen from Yavaskala, Finland, in the University of Arizona. They are getting a fabulous Finn, who is the best shooting big man in the draft. He's got a high, quick release. He's a pick-and-pop terror. He averaged over a point per possession in 11 different offensive categories and 1.2 points per possession in pick-and-pop. That is outstanding. He's very skilled. He can drive it. He has 69 three-point field goals this year. That's the most by a seven-footer in 20 years. That quick release makes him really hard to deal with, and it's a high release. He's not a shot blocker, but he knocks free throws down at 83%. With the 14th pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Miami Heat select Markel Fultz from the University of Washington. Well, they're getting a guy who's got an NBA frame already. He's got great length and he's a three-level scorer. He can score from deep, he can score in the middle game, and he can score at the rim. Great body balance. By far in this draft, the best pick-and-roll ball handler in the, in the draft. He's essentially a James Harden clone on the offensive end. Uh, he's got a quick high release on his shot. I think one of the things that's interesting about him, though, he, he, he has a couple of flaws. One, he floats on defense. He is not a great defensive player yet, although he should be really good. He has some LeBron-type blocks where he chases guys down from behind. But to have a guy like this where offensively he's really got no holes in his game, he's a multi-dimensional scorer that once he comes off a of pick and roll, he's got great pace with it. He can change uh, speeds, change direction, an excellent finisher around the basket. With the 15th pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, 
the Portland Trailblazers select Josh Hart from Villanova University. Josh Hart, the Eagle Scout, uh, just really had a great career. He, he's, a, he's a wing finisher, really tough, an excellent guard rebounder, and an outstanding defender, and one of the better guard offensive rebounders in college basketball, especially over the last two years. Uh, primarily a driver, but he can really defend. And he'll be a rotation player, uh, but, but his, his defensive presence and his finishing uh, are the best selling points for Josh Hart. And he, all those merit badges, I mean, he's got to be the first Eagle Scout drafted since Bill Bradley, right? <laughs>